All right. I'm gonna help out news today and I'm gonna shoot a little handheld gimbal thing with the consumer reporter, Bob. And I uh, thought, you know what, it'd be kind of fun is if I go ahead and use the, the Came TV single. And I'm gonna use audio on it and I'm gonna use my little wireless Sony device thing. It's really great because it attaches right into the hot shoe and the audio goes right into the camera. So it'll be an A6300 shoot. I'm not sure what lens I wanna use. I have the 1018, I also have a 35 and I have the 50. All of them are, well, the two uh, primes are 1.8 and they have optical image stabilization built in them so that's super helpful and I'm gonna shoot in HD I don't want to shoot in 4k because I'm gonna deliver it to them and they're just gonna use it however they want to and we don't do 4k <laughs> in news so let's go ahead and set up the camera let's do a little testing let's see how the le different lenses work with the cam single and the a6300 I have a funny feeling I'm gonna end up with the 10 to 18 because I really like that lens it works super well the crop is 1.5 on APS-C but the camera's APS-C, so I know that's super confusing, but 35 millimeter is basically like a normal lens if it is an APS-C lens. Now I'm confused. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, well, let's just try this out. This thing's really easy to set up to watch. Set up the pin to the pin, pop it in, and then lock it down nice and tight. Now setting up audio could be a little tricky because it's gonna be up, up high, it's a little heavier, but the camera is so light, I, I think it'll work out pretty well. If I decide to use this, the 10 to 18, I'm gonna need to put this washer on here. And the reason why is because this lens doesn't clear the body. So it hits on the plate right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on there because I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this lens or not, but it doesn't hurt it to have it on there. And the reason why I use this really wide a washer is because it gives me plenty of surface to work with. This is a really cool wireless. This is the Sony URX P03. Really great. Why? Because it connects right into the camera with this hot shoe adapter and now the audio is going directly into the A6300. Love it. If you're wondering why I have tape on here, it's because these things tend to hit the camera, the little the straps tend to bounce around on the camera and it drives me crazy because you can hear it. it feels kind of heavy, but I think it'll be okay. I'm gonna throw the 35 on there. I just want to do it. It's a small little lens, it's super light. It'll be a nice little tight shot and shoot at 1.8. Give me a little shallow depth of field and make this other camera, the A6300, work a little harder and see how good that continuous autofocus works. Nice tight little package. Let's see how it works. We're testing. <laughs> Move too fast. I think we got it. You ready for this one? You gonna knock it out? Hi, I'm Consumer Bob. <laughs> We're taking a very exciting step here in San Diego and creating NBC7 Response. Is that where you want to stop? We're taking a very exciting step here in San Diego and creating NBC7 Response. That was a good one. Okay. It's a new commitment you won't find anywhere else. If you need help, NBC7 responds. One more? Wow. Well, that was kind of nuts. Uh, this thing was uh, worked pretty well. I don't think it should have. But I, uh, for what I needed it to do, it actually worked pretty well. Hi, I'm Consumer Bob. We're taking a very exciting step here in San Diego and creating NBC7 responds. We've expanded our team to include a group of dedicated men and women who want to help resolve your problems and complaints. No call or email will go unanswered. Our consumer investigation team will research your concerns, looking for answers, for solutions, and to make things right. Here's what you do. Go to our website at NBC7.com and search Response. Put in all your contact information, plus a brief description of your consumer problem. Our team will jump into action, looking for answers and to recover your money. It's a new commitment you won't find anywhere else. If you need help, NBC7 responds. <laughs> the encoders, well, they didn't go absolutely bananas, which I was really surprised. I thought it was just gonna start vibrating and squealing like 
you know, like a crazy rat like that. See how it taps something, it goes nuts? But it didn't do that, it worked really well. This is totally overweight. This shouldn't have worked, it's way too top heavy. I don't think it's overweight, it's just too top heavy. I got the carriage all the way down to the bottom, but uh, you know what, it was fun, it worked out. And if it wasn't gonna work, then I'd have gone the traditional route. I have a tripod and I could have just did it the normal way or handheld it, but hey, have a little fun. See what happens, experiment. That's what it's all about, right? <laughs> Yesterday I was out shooting some stills with the a6300 and it gave me the overheating warning kind of like there's a little temperature gauge It shows up on this on the LCD screen and I was shocked because it was only about 80 degrees outside And I was just basically day taking some quick pictures So I was just surprised why in the heck would it overheat just being outside and basically what I think was is basically if the camera is on and it's you know powered on and it's in the Sun direct sun it's gonna overheat which is not cool so I really love this camera I dig the a6300 a lot it's got some great features and I've been using it a ton but I haven't really been using it in full Sun now I have some work coming up that I want to use it outside on a gimbal well I can't have it overheating and this is an HD I know it'll overheat in 4k but now I'm worried that it's going to overheat in HD and I've been shooting in HD to avoid the overheating problems and now I'm having problems again. So here's the deal. I've got the a6300 right here, right next to me. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it. I'm going to put it in the sun. So here we go. Full sun. It's going to be sitting out here in the full sun for a little while on. And I'm going to test it to see how long it takes to overheat because it's a warm day today in San Diego. It is about 90 degrees. I think outside right now it feels hot. So I'm not surprised if it overheats, because it will, I know it will. So here it is, I'm gonna turn it on. This is the test, and we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to start my clock now. Okay, here we go. On, that's all, I'm not gonna run it, nothing, just on, to see if it overheats. There it is, you can see it, and I think it's gonna just overheat and shut down here very soon. There it is, and there it goes. All right, well there you have it. Um, it overheats in about eight minutes, and maybe around nine minutes, just shuts down. So, using and I was not recording. I was not shooting pictures, just hanging out in the sun, moving the camera around like this. That's it, that's all I did. And it overheats. It, the temperature gauge comes on, says it's gonna overheat, and then the warning signs come on, and within like one or two seconds, that little screen goes black, and you have to let it cool. So. I have to rethink what I'm going to do next week because this is not going to work if I'm going to use it outside. Um, it's a problem. Sony, we need to fix this because the camera... People are going to be wanting to use this camera outside when they're on vacation. And if they're out in the sun running around some cool place, and I mean cool as in like a cool place to be, not a, <laughs> a, a not cool place, it's going to overheat and you're going to lose shots. And I'm a little frustrated right now because I really like this camera a lot. And this is a huge problem for me. I don't know what to do. I'll be honest with you. I was reading online. People are putting dummy batteries in using external power. I have one of those coming tomorrow. I'm going to try the dummy battery with an external you know like a battery source power source because maybe the battery gets warm and it kind of helps put it over the edge well push it over the edge so we'll see geez i'm sweating just from standing outside i'm overheating and i get it but i don't have a temperature gauge and i don't shut down <laughs> all right uh that's it for now um we'll finish this off tomorrow to see uh if the external battery with the dummy battery works but i'll be honest with you i'm i'm a little bummed because i i don't know what to do i don't can't wait to show you what came in the mail today. At least I hope it's at the door. It better be at the door. This FedEx said they delivered it. Okay, let's go see what we got. What the hell is that noise? That, that sounds like it's gonna cost me money. Yeah, it came in. That's not it. That's it. This is what I'm talking about. All right, let's open this bad boy up. <laughs> so what could it be? What could it be? Well, let me just tell you right now, it is something for, it's for your iPhone, that's what it's for. It's the Olo Clip. Oh man, very cool. Look at that. They sent the studio too. Now that is a powerful combination, huh? Look at that. 
Well, this is really great. Thank you, Oloclip, for sending this. This is really cool. So we have a four-in-one photo lens, which is awesome. And then we have the Studio Ultimate. That is so cool. It's on a rail. So you can hold it like that. It's loaded with accessories. Little thing here, a strap of some kind. Another clip. Oh, nice. Look at these. How cool is that? Caps, I bet. Yep, caps. Now, I wonder how, how you do this. Separate them. Um, that's pretty neat. That must be the wide angle. See? Woo! Right on. Well, hey, thanks, Olo Cliff, for sending this. I am going to test this out. I'll do a little review on it which will be a whole lot of fun. I'm gonna, I, I love shooting with my iPhone. I, it, the quality is really good. I mean, it's not like a A6300 or an RX100 but four, but hey, this sometimes is what you got in your pocket. So, you know, you wanna use it. That was kind of fun. Time to make some dinner and chill. Long day today. See you in a little while. Oh, but wait, there's more. I have another box here I want to open because I completely forgot about it. But, you know, uh, just to wrap this thing up for the week, uh, this is a kind of a different vlog. This one has gimbals, it has the A6300, and it has the Olo Clip. It has a lot of cool stuff going on in there, and I'm going to be testing out that Olo Clip. So, the next vlog, I'll have more samples and video samples and still samples and all that fun stuff. But first, I want to open up this cool box. This is from a buddy of mine. His name is Brian Hallett, and he can read his stuff on, uh, was it was a Pro Video Coalition? They are uh, a great site, resource for for all things broadcast equipment, audio, cameras, all that fun stuff. But uh, we had a fun little time at NAB and doggone it, just opened the box. All right, here we go. Open this little bad boy up. Hey, look at that, it's an airy hat. It's the sky panel, soft lights, awesome. It's an airy hat. <laughs> you don't know how hard it is to get airy products. Airy swag is hard to come by. Okay, Brian, there it is. Thank you, my friend, you're, you're awesome. I really appreciate you getting me the hat, so cool. Now we need to hunt down like an Aerie Alexa hat. Can it be done? We need to try. <laughs> I want one. If I get one, I'll get you one, I promise, all right? What am I gonna name this episode? I think this episode of the vlog should be called the love-hate relationship with the A6300 because I am a little baffled, bewildered, and frustrated. Those are three things that I am right now. <laughs> I'm baffled because it, why did Sony make this camera so great? I mean, they put such amazing autofocus, continuous autofocus, 4K image is awesome, rolling shutter is horrible, one of the worst I've ever seen, and it overheats. It overheats using it in 4K. It doesn't in HD if you're indoors and you're comfortable. But boy, you go outside, you leave it on, it overheats in less than eight, nine, 10 minutes. It'll overheat in less than 10 minutes in the direct sun, just being on. There's something going on here. It does not make sense. And here's my theory and then I'm gonna, I'm out. Uh, my theory is I think that there is some kind of sensor in here that's doing the temperature gauging and it's too sensitive. I think they need to bring it down. I mean, is the camera gonna melt? I don't know. Maybe they've melted these things in the factory or something, but I don't think so. I think there's something going on in here that needs to be tweaked through firmware. Bring it down so that it's not overheating all the time, Sony, because dang it, this is a great camera and I want to use it all the time. I want to use it for fun and I want to use it on my gimbal for work. It's a capable little monster and it's awesome, but this overheating thing is ridiculous. Okay. Sorry, I'm done, all right? I'm done ranting. I wanna leave on a high note. Everybody, enjoy your summer. It's almost here, and my son is home now, and I'm, I'm totally thrilled that he's here, hanging out, it's fantastic. And uh, Brian, for getting me the hat, you're awesome. <laughs> Going back to the positive side here. <laughs> all right, everybody, have a great week, and until the next vlog, I'll see you later. Please subscribe. There it is, and there it goes.